What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and welcome to the Darkest Dungeon 2 Leper Guide. In this video, we'll cover all of Leper's strengths, his weaknesses, his skills, we'll look at his trinkets, his paths, and we'll talk about some teammates to help get him rolling when you unlock him. Starting off, what is the Leper good at? He has a high amount of self-sustain between a very useful stress heal, solemnity, and his ability to generate block as well as weaken means that he can stay up front and take a lot of hits. Even though Leper has a very wide damage range which can potentially be bad for you if it low rolls, he does have one of the highest damage ceilings out there. Which means if you can find a way to get this dude crit tokens, he will hit for a lot of damage, especially if you're able to clear his blind off consistently too. His final strength is he has a lot of utility. Not only can he keep himself alive, he can help control the enemy's positioning, he can taunt to help keep people alive, he can weaken them with intimidate, and then he can even set combo and immobilize with bash. So there are a lot of reasons to bring Leper besides swinging the big sword. Time for the weaknesses, what is Leper bad at? He has incredibly low resists across the board. Like I am not kidding, look at these, they are so bad. The dude that's full muscle in giant metal armor with a huge sword has the same move resist as Runaway. You can't make this up. Even with Withstand giving him a bunch of extra resists, he is still gonna get hit by most of the dots, most of the movement, all that kind of crap. It's all gonna stick. His next incredibly notable weakness is his self-blinding. It's not even the fact that he blinds when using Chop, it's the fact that he can start every fight blinded. Sometimes he can get very unlucky and roll two of them, which means depending on the team and the situation, Leper could be spending his first one or even two turns not attacking in a game that is very heavily damage focused. His final weakness is that he needs to be in the front. A lot of characters suffer from needing to be in specific positions, so it's not a weakness unique to him, but it is a weakness nonetheless. Next, let's talk about how to play Leper. He's rather straightforward, so if you want to do tanking, you should just be using stuff like Intimidate and his self heals, as well as Withstand. Or if you want him to do big damage, then you set him up for big chops. And if you have Blind on him, there are a couple ways to deal with it. You could use Reflection, that's the easiest answer. However, if you're not in a position where you need to stress heal, if you're blinded and it's only one blind token, you can actually swing bash or purge or even intimidate if you wanted to. This way you're still throwing out a little extra damage on the off chance that you do hit. Now it's time to talk about Leper's skills as well as his paths. And we're gonna start with Chop. So Chop is his main source of damage and it's got a pretty decent damage range. It's much higher than most normal damage ranges, which are about three to six, four to eight. He's up to six to 12 baseline but he's balanced around being blind, potentially missing constantly. So his effective damage, if you really just go by like the raw percentages, is closer to three to six, and that is not that high. The upgrade doesn't do much better for Chop, it doesn't get any crits, as well as the damage on the top end goes up, which means he wants crits. So if you can't get him crit, he does have higher potential damage, but it's much harder to reach that potential. The nice thing is though, a lot of his heavy attack skills like Chop, Hue, and Break ignore blind if there's combo. However, a lot of people want combo. So if you're feeding it to Leper, that means no one else gets it. So you have to be very careful with what you're doing there. But this is still a great move. It, I mean, for him. So it does a lot of good damage as long as you can mitigate the blind. If you have an answer to that, he puts out some good damage. Next is Purge. This move doesn't come in handy too often. But both things on this, actually everything about this is really good. So you get some okay damage, it also doesn't blind him. One of the secret leper strategies is to use moves like Purge, Intimidate, and Bash because they do not blind leper. So sometimes if you don't need to tank up and stuff like that, you can just roll the 50-50 to see if you get a little bit of damage and some other utility. So that's your pro tip right there. But otherwise Purge, Chip damage, knockback three is really nice, and then combo and clear corpse, so it does a lot of extra stuff. It's a pretty solid move, it's just not one you do all the time. With Stan though, this is a very good move. This is a really good tanking move. His base resists are really bad, so this kind of helps him with that, but it gives him block each turn while starting him with some extra block, and then it gives him taunt, and this is really good for a variety of situations because since he gets every 
Well, most resist, you know, he gets the dot resist and move resist. This means it's usable in pretty much any area because you're going to run into some of this at some point. So it's pretty good. Even if you're in Tempest, this is still a decent move just in case you need to uh, tank up or something. Solemnity, this is still the best selfie on the game. It's very powerful, but it only has two uses. So when you time this is very crucial. The nice part is though, even if you're over the HP threshold, you can still get the stress healing. So if you're stalling or if something's out of reach and he has nothing to do, heal some stress. Otherwise, very good move. Reflection is really, really nice. And it's actually a good source of a, a mastery upgrade for a couple of reasons. One is not only does the stress removal go up and you get some debuff res for a couple turns, the biggest reason to upgrade Reflection is that it removes the cooldown. So you can hit Reflection every single turn if you have to. You don't usually have to do that, but it's nice to have that option. Hue is good. I mean, it's a, it's a multi-target move, and if something's combo, then you at least you can hit that. But really, Hue is just kind of good for getting rid of tokens primarily. I mean, you can really buff it up and hit something really hard, but it's... It's usually better to single target stuff, so Hue is a little bit harder to maximize, in my opinion. Revenge, this is really good for a lot of uh, a lot of situations, so being able to use this and just get instant strength is really nice. You have a chance of getting crit too when it's upgraded, and that's good. And the fact that it removes weaken and then gives you strength, which seems kind of like, yeah, I mean, it's already canceling it. Since it removes Weaken, it means that it takes Weaken away, so your Strength doesn't cancel it, so it's already gone, so you're more likely to get the Strength to stick. And this is really good for a lot of reasons, like you can use this in bosses, you can use this in road fights, and it's faster than Ruin in terms of like getting damage out, so it's pretty good. But this is definitely something you swap into, usually you don't run this all the time. Intimidate, this is a great move, it doesn't need the mastery point i mean the fact that it removes stealth that can be really good but you know by the time you're at the point of giving intimidate mastery you're already so far into the run and you really don't care about stealth that you have ways around it at that point so this is a rare move to upgrade however the base form is fantastic so you taunt yourself and you weaken a target so if you hit like a heavy hitter with weaken and then they hit taunted leper they're doing half damage this move is super good and definitely one that should be on a lot of builds depending on what you're doing ruin this is a much slower way to do damage but this gets really crazy if you have a way to get extra actions so with encore and trinkets you know like redoubt those are good ones to give him extra turns bodkin actually i think bodkin cancels this unfortunately but if you have um I guess the beck and call trophy to give yourself more bleed resist or bleed damage that could work but the reason this is better for bosses is because bosses usually get extra turns they have aoe's cleaves like they hit multiple targets and lepers slow so this will ramp up pretty fast and so what you can do is hit ruin and then honestly just start swinging but I mean, if you really wanted to, you could revenge first and then ruin and then start swinging. But the more turns you get at the end of this, the better. Then we have break. Break is just not a good move. It it hits for normal damage. Like four to seven is normal damage and it removes block. But removing block isn't that pressing of an issue. And it doesn't get the ignore blind on combo at base, which is very strange. So... This, this move really just never sees play. There's almost no reason to run it. I mean, Monarch, maybe. Because you get weaker chop damage, so you can use this as a substitute, but it's still not, not great. And then we have Bash. Bash is like my favorite move in this kit, just because it does okay damage. Immobilizes Leper, which gives you, you know, a good reason to use it. Immobilizes the target. There could be a good reason for that. Daze is the target, and if we all know, two dazes become a stun. So if you have something like a trinket that gives Leopard days on hit. He could actually stun something randomly with Bash, and it's pretty funny. And when it's upgraded, it gives combo. This can help your other teammates who want combo as well. Leopard can kind of feed it to him. As far as paths go, we were talking about Wanderer, and Tempest is the big chop damage path. 
And that's really all it does. He gets more debuff resist to help him shrug off weakens and his own blinds, which can be really nice. Chop hits way harder. And then he gets almost disease immunity because the resist cap for diseases is 95, even though he gets 100. And then he loses some HP and some speed, but he's not the fastest character and he has the most, one of the most HPs in the entire game. So those negatives aren't too bad. And the minus speed triggers things that have like, you know, those trains that have two or less speed, they, they go into effect. That's what Tempest likes to set up. And so for Tempest, just a, a really basic loadout would be something like this. So you get your self sustain, you get revenge if you need it, and then you have bash just in case, and then you have like chop for when those hits come in. You can also swap in withstand if you really just need to help your team survive sometimes. And then put in ruin for, for bosses, but the rest of this is, is fine to me. And leper goes pretty well with most people, but we'll talk about teams later. So poet, this is tank leper, and the most regrettable thing about the poet effect is that the self healing, the bonus healing given does not affect the stress heal. If this affected reflection and solemnity stress heal by 50%, you know, just like make this two, like minus two at base and minus three later and give this, you know, minus three and then minus four or something for a stress healing, it'd be a lot better, but it's not. And so what poet does really well is when you use solemnity, it's pretty much a full heal, especially when you upgrade it. It's just like zero to a hundred almost. And that's really nice. But that's about all it's got going for it. He loses damage, so you're pretty much going utility leper. So you want to use something like withstand and maybe intimidate and go like this. You can use purge too, but I, I think this is just better for a, a poet loadout. And then you really have to put some high damage paths on the team to help him like cover this, this damage loss. But poet is good. It just, it has very specific matchups. There are a couple bosses it is super good against, and there's a lot of stuff it doesn't do anything against, and that's kind of, kind of frustrating. And the final path we'll talk about is Monarch. So Monarch is an interesting one. So he gets the minus HP, the huge minus chop damage. That is at all times, okay? And this is important for the bottom half of this path, which is against cosmic enemies. So it says combat start, cosmic enemies, 50% HP, like 50% max HP, and then 100% chop damage. However, the previous negatives subtract from the new positives. So this is actually plus 20% max HP and plus 25% chop damage against cosmic very unfortunate and the plus speed can brick some of your trinkets that are if you have two or less speed so this is a really hard path to make shine it's one saving grace is that it is essentially intimidate spam because intimidate i mean the purge vulnerable doesn't see too much play it's not bad but it doesn't see a lot of play however the intimidate vulnerable this turns your Intimidate into two Weakened, one, in, uh, one Vulnerable, and two Taunt. That is massive. So it's really, really good for that. But if you're looking at it for damage, I call it Worst Tempest. Because your damage is a little bit less, and you have a little bit more HP. Some people like that. I personally don't, because... This is a path that is essentially dead weight until you fight cultists, because that's where all, all the cosmic enemies are. They're the cultists, they're shambler, and they're mountain bosses. So if you're not fighting one of those, you are at a deficit. I guess we talked about a monarch loadout. It would look something similar to this if you're not fighting cosmic. And then when you're fighting cosmic, you can do uh, something like that. Like just swap in chop and hopefully you can just go to town on stuff. But like I said, feels a bit weaker than Tempest if you want it for damage. Now it's time to talk about Leper's Trinkets, and we'll start with a simple flower. This is pretty much the Poet Trinket, because Poet gets movement and stun resist, as well as you're not really swinging the sword too much, so you don't really care about the stress that you get if you do crit. Otherwise, this trinket, it's good for what it does, but the circumstances and where it is really good are very, very low. There are not many things that do both move and stun and even if they do they have to target leper 
And is that worth a trinket slot? It can be. But this is really one of those types of trinkets where you have it in the bag, like on the, the stagecoach, and then you swap it in when you get to the encounter. Next, we'll talk about Inevitable End. This got changed before 1.0, and in early access, it wasn't that good either. So it's it's not much better. The thing that really holds us back is the, the minus 2% DBR per round. You know, that's just self-destructive at that point. There's no there's no reason to run it. Like the the removing tokens and stuff is cool. Break is not a good ability even with this. So there's just no reason to run this string and not that I found anyway. However, uncommon seashell, this one's pretty good. So if you're gonna tank with them or do stuff like intimidate spam, actually this is specifically for intimidate spam because Taunt, if I remember correctly, counts as a negative token, which means that every time you taunt up, you take less damage. And if you get hit, you bleed, but if you're using withstand to up your bleed resist, or if you have a bleed resist trinket with it, it's pretty good. So out of his three class trinkets, I like this one the most if you're not going like Tempest, Big Swing Leper. For neutral trinkets though, there are quite a few that are good for Leper, such as the Appalling Apron, because his dot resists aren't the highest, so even with withstand, if something gets through, you're constantly healing, which is really nice. Since his damage range is so wide, any source of crit can be very powerful, so that's why Heartseeker is good. Then you have stuff like Gnarly Knuckles for damage, Sharpness Charm, all that stuff is really good on him. Hierarchy of Sights, if you can get this from Shambler, is good for him too. And there's a couple others. So we talked about Gnarly Knuckles, bonus melee damage. What is it? Calibrating Sensor, so if you miss, you get Strength. He's really slow, so he might get blocked when he gets hit. There's so many good trinkets for Leper, it's actually kind of crazy. I'd avoid some of the higher risk stuff, like Temptation, as good as it is. Not quite good for Leper, just because if he's taunting and stuff and getting hit, he's up front. It's a little more dangerous, but he can still make it work. Wounding Words is pretty good for him, too. Uh, compass, he's a great compass holder, if you pick that up from the Shroud. But there are a couple other really good ones for him, so one would be something like Selfish Motivation, because every time he gets negative tokens, like his blind, then he is able to do more damage. And if you have a combo generator for the same reason, Cruel Intent is amazing on Leper. So if you run him with Jester or a Cultist or someone that can just consistently throw combo on a target, then Leper essentially has 66% extra crit every time he attacks. That is pretty crazy. So it, he is the best Cruel Intent holder by far for that reason. And there's one more. So Goading Gargoyle. This thing is pretty freaking hard to find. And the, the plus four speed under 40 flame is cool. But really you want that top part. Turn start, convert blind to strength at a 66% rate. So you're essentially just turning your blind tokens into strength tokens, which not only gets rid of them, it also boosts his damage. So this thing is super good. Again, you have to find it though. To wrap up the video, let's talk about good teammates for Leper. The easiest and most consistent teammates to run for Leper are combo generators like Jester. So Jester in Darkest Dungeon 1, was really good with Leper because of Battle Ballad, and in this game, it's pretty much the same reason, but different tools. So instead of giving Leper a bunch of speed, crit, and accuracy, like Darkest Dungeon 1, you combo things, which gives Leper accuracy, and he gets to hit through his blinds. Jester also has a plethora of movement skills to help keep your team in order, or move out of the way to make sure that Leper can constantly be where he needs to be. So I would say Jester is definitely his best ally. One thing I forgot to mention as well with Jester is that he can give Encore. So if you have Ruin Leper running, that means that you get an extra turn of big damage. His next ally might be an unlikely one, and that is Runaway. So the reason that Runaway is really good with Leper is, for one, he has very low bleed resist, and bleed is the most common damage over time, and she can cauterize him. Another reason is that Smokescreen, especially upgraded, is super good for Leper because it gives vulnerable and combo, so Leper is able to hit for big damage. Runaway also has access to Hearthlight Plus, which clears blind, and that can help Leper too, as well as the rest of your team if you really need it. And then finally, Runaway can move herself around the field with her abilities to again keep Leper up front. The final best ally, in my opinion, for Leper is Man at Arms. 
because man at arms can take over the tanking duties for leper if need be or you can put them together to have a really strong tanky beefy front line and if you really need it man at arms has access to command to get rid of leper's blinds as well as give them strength at the same time there are plenty of other people that work well with leper but honestly i think these three are the best all right well, that's gonna do it for the video thanks for watching let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments if you found any other fun synergy with leper or if you are able to come up with some other strategies that are worth talking about let me know or join discord talk about them there if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up check out the links in the box like discord twitter twitch and patreon and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time